Now here's my third subject, and that's called financial independence. Oh, by the way, before I get to financial independence, let me cover one more point. One of the major reasons for setting goals is for what they make of you in achieving them. My teacher advised me when I first got started at age 25, he said, Jim, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. You know, enough zeros to impress your accountant. And he said, I'm here to help you. You're only 25 years old. You've been to one year of college. You've got a beautiful family, every reason to do it. Why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? And he said, here's why. And I thought, he doesn't need to teach me why. Wouldn't it be nice to have a million dollars? He said, no, then you'll miss it. He said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. I'm telling you that statement changed my life. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. He said, now, once you become a millionaire, what's important is not the money. I thought, that's kind of strange teaching. He said, honest, it isn't important. He said, you could just give the money away. Now, I did better than that. I lost it all. By the time I was 31, I was a millionaire. By the time I was 33, I was broke. And I'll tell you a little bit about that story later. But when I lost all my money, guess what? I found out Mr. Shope was right. What was valuable was not the money. What was valuable was what I became to earn the money. The skills I had, the knowledge I had about the marketplace, the values that I had going for me, they were more valuable than the money. And here's an important statement to remember. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. So part of the key here is to set the kind of goals that will make something of you. Don't set them too low so that you don't have to grow and you don't have to read and you don't have to try and you don't have to stretch. Don't set them too low. And then don't sell out. Don't go for something that's going to cost you your virtue or cost you your values or sell out your principles. There's a good middle road here to follow. Goals that will inspire, goals that will help you grow, change, develop, and become better than you are. Okay, now let's talk about financial independence. How to become rich by 40, 35 if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find an opportunity like I did. Let me show you how I did it. Financial independence. First of all, I like the phrase financial independence. Some people are a little bit concerned about using the word becoming rich or becoming wealthy, and I can understand that. I struggled a little bit with this. Is it okay to go for becoming rich, go for becoming wealthy? And maybe that's a bit too strong a word or strong a term. So here's what I've come up with that I think is comfortable for me, and that is how to become financially independent. I think it's every person's heritage here especially in America, uh, to become financially independent. Now, let me give you my definition of financial independence. Financial independence is the ability to live from the income of your own personal resources. Financial independence. Now, it depends on how you want to live. If you need two, three thousand dollars a month, if you need four or five thousand a month, if you need ten thousand a month, some people may need, you know, a hundred thousand a month. But whatever you would need to live and you could earn that living from the income of your own personal resources, that's what I call financial freedom, financial independence.